Good morning. In this uh, lesson today, we're going to be talking about making a flowchart that includes an if statement or a conditional statement. Now, I'm going to show you how to make a flowchart out of challenge number 12 here, but you're going to be tasked with making a flowchart for challenge number 11. Uh, challenge number, uh, number 11 is, is the challenge puzzle, and so uh, it's a little bit more advanced. And so there's a video that I put in the instructions that you can watch if you if you are having trouble solving uh, number 11. Okay, but the point here today is to make a flowchart. So let me split the screen and show you how we can do that. <coughs> okay, so I have this new uh, flowchart document. I titled it conditional statement. Um, and we'll start off like any other flowchart. We'll have our start, color it green. Um, and then we'll include a rectangle for the first step. I'll connect them. And then I can see here that I have move forward. I have this, which we don't know how to do yet. I have get nectar and make honey. Okay, so I'll start with move forward because that's the first uh, step we're actually doing. Remember, loops are represented by arrows. After move forward, I have a conditional statement. Now, conditional statements are represented by uh, rhombus, just like this one over here, this diamond, or if you want to call it by mathematical name, you can call it a rhombus. Now, the reason we use the rhombus is because it has two corners coming out of the sides, and we're going to use those uh, to, to offer the two options. Two options are get nectar and make honey. And so inside this, this rhombus, I'm going to say if at flower, right? Because that's, that's what we're checking right now. Are we at, at a flower or not? Uh, let me just make it bigger. And then after that, I, I have two steps. And so let me copy this twice. I'm going to put one step here to the right and another step here to the left, okay? And now I'm gonna connect this over here. I'm gonna say this is the option. This is where we get nectar. And then over here, this is where we make honey. And I'll connect this to the right side here. Now, how do we know? The, right now our path is breaking into two. If I'm at a flower, I'm going to get nectar, not nectar, just nectar. And then if I'm not, then I'll make honey. And so I have to know which path to follow by putting text here. So I'm going to, right here, I'm going to say, this is yes, I'm at flower. And I'm going to give this a color so it's obvious. Uh, let me do green so it's because yes. And then on the other side, I'll do no in red. So here you're asking, you're always asking yourself a question. Am I at a flower? If the answer is yes, then you're going to go down this path. If, you, if the answer is no, then you're going to go down the left path and you're going to make honey. After that, they both do the same thing because what happens after that is it just goes back to move forward with a loop. Uh, and so what I can do here is put in my end circle or ellipse, call it end, give it a color, and connect both uh, uh, steps to it. So let's do this. All right. So the only thing we have left right now is to just represent this loop that repeats seven times uh, in our flowchart. And I know what you're thinking. How did Mr. Omar changes clothes so fast and change the settings so fast, and it's just magic, okay? And some coding. Now, how do we represent this loop? We're gonna use this directional connector over here, or an arrow, and we're gonna connect uh, right after, right after we make honey and get nectar, they join right here. This is where I'm gonna start my loop. Because after they join, uh, they're going to loop back to the beginning. And this is how I connect my arrows. I connect one side and then move the middle. I connect the other side over here. 
then again I grab it from the center and make it look nice there okay so this is our loop we're going to move forward we're asking if we're at a flower or not if yes we get nectar if no we make honey after that we move we move to the next step which is to go back to the loop and we do this seven times so let me add some text here there x7 and let me give it a nice color all right Ooh, where's that all right uh, this is it it's starting to the, our flow charts are going to start looking a little bit more complex uh, they're going to be pretty cool uh, we're going to be able to have multiple paths we're going to be able to represent more ideas with flow charts uh, and I'm excited to see what you guys do okay please read the instructions make sure you're making your flow chart for challenge number 11 not 12 and I'll see you at some point. Bye.